Thanks, Tom. I think you're getting the idea why um, the Wall Street Journal has called Pittsburgh Roboburg. Um, so for another robot company, I'd like to introduce uh, Steve D'Antonio, um, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Carnegie Robotics. Uh, Steve was one of the original founders of Carnegie Robotics as CEO. Steve has directed the company into new commercial markets and expanded internal um, product development. Provi prior to joining uh, Carnegie Robotics, Steve was business development director of what you just heard, the National Robotics Engineering Center at Carnegie Mellon. He has an engineering degree from Lehigh University and an MBA from Harvard, so we actually were also uh, recruit from Harvard as well. Okay, Steve. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Steve D'Antonio, uh, CEO at Carnegie Robotics. Uh, hopefully I can get this video to play. And, uh, yeah. There we go. Okay, so that's a commercial floor scrubber. We're uh, collaborating with uh, Milfis, which is a Danish uh, $2 billion uh, commercial floor cleaning company. And in this case, we develop all the software for this, uh, have developed the autonomy kit, and then we're now gonna convert this relationship from an engineering relationship to a uh, product supplier. So this, uh, this was at the ISSA show in Chicago in the fall. This product will go to market this summer, and then we're uh, beginning um, the automation of other parts of their product line. So they, they started to get uh, lots of demand for this kind of capability. Just wanted to give you a sense for what's new. Um, so the company itself, we're a 75 person Company has spin out out of NREC, uh, the same as uh, Tom's company previously that we talked about. And we are an engineering company as well as manufacturer of robotic systems and components. And that, those are the markets that we go after, and I'll give you some examples as we go forward. Um, so lots of people have been saying robotics is the next big thing, and so let me take a shot at that. Uh, in fact, I think this grows and maybe backs up some of the earlier speakers so that, that title out of the Wall Street Journal got my attention because in the last two decades, really, the productivity growth, which really dictates uh, cost of living or, or uh, cost of quality uh, uh, moving forward in the physical industries has really been lacking. Uh, compare that to IT, where it's been very strong. In industries like agriculture, construction, mining, it's really been lagging. You're not going to solve that problem with people. Uh, we're already at full employment. Uh, I know at our company we're having trouble bringing in assembly people, and I've heard about, of course, many other manufacturers in the same boat. Uh, what I've also noticed is, of course, with the driverless car investment in the billions, for the first time I'm seeing CEOs in industries outside of that who are really concerned now, hey, is, is my product line going to get disrupted? And they're starting to spend some real money to do new forms of automation of the product line. Uh, the re there's plenty of research out there. Um, I worked in that, uh, I worked for CMU for 16 years. There's plenty, and it's really ready to be commercialized. And, um, you know, the other evidence is now at CMU alone, uh, they've started master's programs in robotics and are graduating 80 to 100 per year. We hire lots of those. And they're really, they're not going to be researchers, they're really going to be practitioners of the art and apply it for real systems. And then finally, in the you know, cell phones and Internet of Things, there's all kinds of low-cost processors, IMUs, cameras, and sensors, that when you creatively bring them together, you can really make some interesting capabilities. So that's the case. So what's some of the problem? Um, and I think it really gets to a lot of what uh, the gentleman from Heavy talked about, is robots are expensive to develop. Uh, I think part of the problem is that there's really no first-tier supplier base uh, available for this, because it's really, uh, robots is an integrative science, right? They, uh, particularly in a ground robot, they all share common components. You need to see the environment, a perception system. You need to know where you are in the world, a positioning system. You need to be safe, uh, not hurt itself or others. And then you need a computer to run all this software. So that's generally a capability that you need across all the different types of platforms. But there really isn't a, se a series of component suppliers yet because it's really been an emerging market. Uh, and really, if you wanted to be a component supplier, if you wanted to start investing your own money, the, the number one question is, hey, is there enough volume for me to sell this uh, to system developers? 
and, and really, what should I build? What is the right requirement? What's the sweet spot to meet, to meet all these applications? And on the system developer side, so all these folks that are showing you mobile robots moving around, it's really a make versus buy, like any system developer. And, and on, the, on, the, um, on the buy side, it's like, are there components there? Do they perform? Are they affordable? Can I integrate them? And what often is the case today is the answer is no. So they're going to make their own or they're gonna adapt a sensor or a component made for another uh, market and try to adapt it. And as a result, uh, you end up spending a lot more money and time to get that robot built. You may never get to market. And the other key thing is that uh, you really get to divert it from maybe what your core differentiator of, of what your robot application is. Um, and it, you really, you know, if you, if you have to build everything from scratch, then you need a holy triad of mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers to build a robot together. And it'd be great to be able to just get the, the type of engineers on your core IP. Okay, so uh, what's, what's our strategy? So we do custom system development. And um, so we've, uh, you know, served various markets. So the one up on the top left is a, um, a robot that detects IEDs. And uh, the Army will be making a production decision on that in January 2018. And then, of course, there's the MILFIS robot. Both of these uh, share a common component, in this case, a stereo camera that provides obstacle detection for their various applications. So that's our approach, as we look at across the markets and are there some common requirements and if we think there's enough volume there, we'll spend our own money and we'll partner and we'll license technology and we'll build components. So we've done it in the stereo camera area as well as in positioning systems. And then we sort of build our own little market by, by designing them in and as these things go, go to market, we start to build volume. So uh, let's expand a little bit in the stereo cameras. We've had a line of stereo cameras since 2012. And um, some of the pictures there show uh, what some of the data that they produce. The upper one there, we have a partnership with Mind Vision Systems, and they use our stereo cameras to, to basically look at the convergence of the, of the mine. Um, is, there, are they, or is it changing? Where do I have to put roof support? And there's literally thousands of mines, underground mines, that need this capability, and this company is starting to scale up, and they're using their sensors to get there. The lower one is a manhole where you want to do inspection of, you know, where do I, does this manhole need to be uh, repaired, um, enhanced in some fashion? And all of these are, these are not images, these are colorized point clouds that come out of the stereo camera. And then in the positioning side, we have a partnership with Swift Navigation up in San Francisco. They're a uh, VC funded startup that has great um, low cost uh, GPS RTK technology. And then we have went ahead and developed an enclosure for them to make it very easy to integrate this capability into ground robots. We'll be bringing a lot of our uh, positioning software in to make this a very, we think, in a very enabling technology for ground robotics at a, at a price point that really can't be matched. Okay, company outlook. So um, we're a, uh, you know, uh, right now about a $15 million company. We bootstrapped it. We still have the original capital from the 10 founders back in 2010. We're at the stage, uh, well, and one of the things we're doing right now, it's going to be finished in another month or so, is we're building a production facility to handle the, the expanding product volume in the company. Um, that's the fastest growing part of the company. Uh, at this point, we really have a proven team that knows how to engineer and build things and be able to meet a price point. And believe me, it, was, uh, it took a long time to get to that. It's, it's very hard. Um, but uh, we've got new systems and components that are, are going to launch this year and next, and we're looking to raise about a five to ten million dollars in the near term. Use of funds. Um, so we've really been uh, we haven't focused a lot on marketing and sales. Uh, we've never actually had one of those types of employees. I, I have nothing against those people. I used to be one. Um, but we really focused on uh, let's figure out how to make this work. Let's figure out how to engineer. Let's figure out how to build. And now uh, we think there's the opportunity to really grow the company rapidly and expand this notion of components into uh, more parts of, a, of the anatomy of a mobile robot. So again, my name is Steve D'Antonio. Please uh, see me after the talk if you're interested in uh, learning more. Thank you.